So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, my name is Stuart Blumenthal. I'm the Acumatica Practice Director here at NetaWork. And today we are going to be going over Acumatica's month and training on what should you be doing on a month uh, on a on at the end of every single month within Acumatica and the different modules. Uh, today's lesson will be down, uh, taught by Dan St. John, who's one of our senior consult Acumatica consultants here at NetaWork. Um, so we're very proud of having him do this. Please keep in mind a couple things. One is that I know that everyone has a couple different month end processes. Everyone might be a little bit different. So um, please work with, if you have questions afterwards, please work with your consultant on in regarding that. Two, there's different people in different stages here. We've got people that have been live on the system for a while. And we also have people that are not been, um, that are currently in implementation. So keep that in mind that everyone's gonna be a little bit different in terms of their knowledge base on there. So Dan's gonna try covering a lot of this. Um, and three, these are just things that we have seen on a month-end basis for a lot of clients, and we just want to make sure we, we share our information. Um, with that, one last thing, um, all the phone lines are muted, um, so please keep the questions, um, uh, use the questions feature. Um, I, I'm actually going to be monitoring that. Uh, the presentation is going to be about 30 minutes long, um, and, if, and again, if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to... Uh, feel free to ask. So with that, Dan, I'm going to make you the presenter. And um, hold on one second. Let me make you the presenter. And you should be able to share your screen now at this point. Okay. Morning, everybody. For your um, closing your financial periods, uh, Acumatica does not require you to close a period. However, it is always a good idea to close your periods uh, from a, um, a processing purpose to prevent stray entries into prior periods. Okay, so um, the only modules that have a closing function are inventory, receivables, payables, fixed assets, and banking. And for the most part, you want to close things in that order, banking usually being the last, but there's no hard, fast uh, rule to, to do that. But you just basically start at the bottom of the menu and work your way up. If you ever have any questions about it, you always come up here to the search function, type in close periods, and you'll see what you have. Inventory, receivables, payables, fixed assets, and banking. Okay, so um, we'll start with inventory. And you go to inventory, close financial periods. That's all there is to it. Okay. And you're, it's going to ask you, uh, right now it's in 17. This is a demo data. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to close a month. I can close in several months if I want. But most of the time you should be current on your closing your periods. And so you just close, you're only dealing with one month. You choose the one you want. Now, when you are doing this, you have a couple things here unreleased documents because you want to make sure everything is released before you start closing. So all you have to do is come into the function, click unreleased documents, and just think about it. So I have a document that has not been released yet. So I can come in here. And take it off hold and release. Okay, hope everybody's with me on that part. So I can close this and I'm gonna check one more time for unreleased documents. Okay, this is the desired result. There are no unreleased documents for the selected periods. Okay, you can also check on documents not posted to inventory. And we have a clean slate here. So when you're getting ready to close a period, always check your for unreleased documents and documents not posted to inventory. Once you have all that cleared, then all you gotta do is click on process. And it's done. Okay, and then you're just gonna go on to the next one uh, um, all the way. You can close an entire period of time, there's a range of periods, come in here, 
And once again, check for that. And I'm going to process all. Three, 10, all done. Okay, so for inventory, um, you have a choice. I closed it one at a time, or you can close a whole series of them uh, to whatever gets you um, current. Dan, before you Everybody? go on, there's the one question that came in about can you open a period? So um, I did. I know that you can click on the actions there. So I'm going to let you. Okay. So um, sometimes, uh, especially for your CPA's purposes, there are legitimate reasons why you want to reopen a period. So all you have to do is come in here and do your drop down for your action and reopen a period and you know what periods you want to reopen so uh, if you just want to reopen in january or something like that um then you can but if you're opening it's let's say it's all been closed through the end of um, the year you can't just open one period in that year you got to open everything sequentially so if i want to reopen january I got to reopen all of them. Does everybody understand that? Then essentially, I can do like this and reopen and process. Awesome. Okay, and 13 process, and they're all now reopened. Everybody good with that? Yep, you got to, thank you. You answered our question. Thank you. Okay. So moving up the menu, like I said, we advocate moving up the menu and banking should be basically be last. But moving up the menu, we have, um, we go to receivables and close financial periods. And close periods, what periods do I want? And I'm gonna check them all. I wanna you know, complete 2016. And I check for any unreleased documents. Remember, this is very important for you because you run the risk of it's going to error out. It's going to let you know about it if you don't do this. But it's better to just check it in advance, alleviate frustrations, and process. Okay. If you wanted to, I can come forward and do it uh, the year at a time or do a whole range of uh, um, years at a time, depending on how far back you're, uh, you are in your closing process, and then process. Okay, see, now I got an error. Okay, unreleased documents in 6, 2017. So I did not do the one thing I told you to do. So let's come back in here to 2017, select, and I'll process them all. And now check for unreleased documents. And I've got a series of unreleased documents. These are invoices uh, in 2017. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come into 57, 56, and 54. I'm just going to release these here. And we should make note that Dan is using my demo data. So using demo data at this point here. So uh, this is why some of these are in there at this point here. Okay. So now this one is on credit hold. So that um, basically pertains to a different type of problem that we would want to, um, you know, release from credit hold. I'm logged in as an admin, so it's allow me to really change it, the status there. Um, you know, most of the time you have a reason for having it on a credit hold. So I'm going to release it now. Okay, and close this. Go to the next one. Okay, take it off hold. It's also on credit hold. Release from credit hold. Release. Okay, and then I can go back onto the third one. Also on credit hold, release from credit hold, and release. Okay, so now I can close these down. Oops. 
those financial periods and check once again for unreleased documents. I get the desired return and process. Total closed, okay? I can go to payables and close financial periods. And just to, um, for the sake of um, brevity, I'm going to just do one at a time. Unreleased documents. There are no unreleased documents. And so I process and I'm able to move on to the next one. Is everybody good with that? Yeah, the question that was comes came up, Dan, is that why would we have unreleased documents? Would this something be, is this something normal or is this um, something that just got, maybe got missed and then we're just doing a double check at the end of the period? Well, in the case of the, um, uh, the three that we saw that were on credit hold, um, you have very legitimate reasons. You can't release an invoice, but uh, if it's on credit hold and you can't release the invoice, why do you have the invoice processed? Okay, so are you going to put it on hold? So in theory, um, you know, if you're current on everything, uh, you get to make the decision, am I going to release it from credit hold or am I going to delete the invoice? Because it will not let me go, it will not let me close a period if you have any unreleased documents. Or you can choose not to close the period for, for now and move on, but then you run the risk of uh, forgetting uh, to ultimately release it. I, I, for, the, for, uh, for, the, for the one who asked the question in the group, I think that the best way of saying this is that if you're following your day-to-day -day -day processes, you know, making sure that your invoices are, um, if they're on credit hold, for example, make sure that those are fixed or released. Um, in theory, um, it's very uncommon for people to have um, unreleased documents is more of a safety check than anything else. If you're following your day-to-day -day month and your day-to-day -day procedures, those things should be caught up in there. So it, it's more of a safety check than anything else. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Perfect. For those of you that have fixed assets, they have the exact same process. It's the same process, a uniform all the way up, uh, close, Choose your period, check for unreleased documents, no unreleased documents, and process. Close, and we're done. And then last but not least, will be banking. Close financial periods. Choose your period or a series of multiple, multiple, excuse me, multiple periods, unreleased documents, no unreleased documents, and process. And that's all there is to it. So the, um, like Stuart said, if, you, uh, if you're following your normal day-to-day -day procedures, then you probably do not have any unreleased documents, but this is a way of checking uh, to make sure so that it doesn't interfere with other processes that you might have uh, in here, specifically in this case, uh, closing financial periods. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Also, um, manage financial periods kind of gets you um, the year 2016, let's say. And um, close or whatever type situation. And see here, when I'm choosing a period I, I want to close, I can also see which modules have not been closed. So this is an, another way I can do it. If I want to do it in one bulk, which I'm not a big fan of, but um, I, maybe I'm a little too old school, but I prefer closing them one at a time in my mind. Um, but you can come in here to June uh, 2016, unposted documents, Okay, we have one uh, general journal and take it off hold. I can't do this because it is out of balance. Okay, so I'm not going to troubleshoot this for now because this is um, Stuart's demo data and I don't want to mess him up. So I'm going to choose not to close um, the periods. Um, in there, so, but 
the process is normal, all things being equal. You can come close everything at one time here at one shot, um, or you can do uh, the, a process of starting with inventory and working your way up to the, um, um, the finance, uh, the banking, and then the finance is where you check to see what your total status is. Any questions? So the only question that came in is, and this is probably a transition to the next phase, is which reports do you recommend running at the end of the, each month? Okay. Um, for the, all the appropriate modules, you have your inventory, uh, balance of inventory valuation. You know, we all know inventory valuation has to tie to the general ledger. You have payables with your uh, AP balance by vendor, or um, if you are segregating uh, multiple uh, payables accounts, I would run the AP balance by GL account. Okay, and the same thing with receivables. You have virtually the same thing. AR balance um, by GL account or AR balance by customer. Um, both of them are equal. Um, I do have some customers that have multiple receivables accounts and multiple payables accounts. But for the most part, the vast majority of customers have one, so you can get away with the AR balance by customer. Okay, and then the same thing with your um, and and banking. It's a little bit easier because you're not going to get out of there if it doesn't balance. When you're doing your um, uh, reconciliation statements, okay. It will not let you release it if it's not in balance. So, and this is the, these are all control accounts, so they're all tied to the GL. Any questions? Nope, it looks like you answered that one that came in. Okay. But essentially, that's uh, short and sweet. The, um, that's all there is to closing a period. Um, um, obviously, you would want to reconcile, verify before you actually close the period, which I did not do. Um, but um, you, you reconcile your, uh, your reports to the GL. Um, I, let me throw in one more that you want to do. It's even though purchases does not have a closing function, but you do have a report here, this purchase accrual summary. This is important. Um, yeah, it looks like this one here. Okay, this is a purchase accrual uh, summary. Um, some people know it as a purchases clearing account uh, for when you have a uh, discrepancy between the quantity received and the quantity billed. It shows up here, it's parking place until it becomes a uh, payable. So I've always called it a payable gonna be uh, as opposed to a payable wannabe. But obviously this has to tie to the GL account also. Any other questions? No, it looks like you answered them all at this point here. Cool. So the big thing is making sure that you get your peer, you know, the biggest thing is that we'll say here at Net of Work is that most people do not close out when we find orphans, uh, people do not close out their periods on a timely basis. And, you know, the number one reason you do want to close out your periods is to prevent accidental postings. That's probably the most important um, aspect to this. Um, while, it's right. not, while it's not required, um, really putting a lock on your system and, um, and putting it in stone at that point, as they call it. Um, and as we alluded to at the beginning or talked to about at the beginning, you can always reopen a period. So it's better to err on the side of closing a period to prevent accidental postings in the past than allowing the postings to occur and then trying to fix, figure out what got posted wrong by whom in your system. Right. Here, here's an age old adage about that and everything. And I get calls on this frequently 
where um, at the end of a year, you run all your documents and you, pre you send your documentation to your accountant, your CPA, and you don't close the uh, general ledger, you don't close the modules. Somebody comes along and posts something to the prior year and then I'll, all of a sudden when the um, uh, CPA gives you your adjustments and you enter the adjustments in like that and also, well, guess what happens? You're out of balance, they don't tie to anything. So that's the major, major argument for closing your periods. So you close everything, send your documentation to the CPA for that period, and then um, when they get around to sending you your um, adjusting entries, you can always reopen the period. So reopen the uh, finance, reopen the GL period, make your journal entry, and then close it again. Uh, good question that just came in. Does closing any periods do any journal entries like in year end? No. No, it does not. It does not post anything for you. Great. Hopefully that answered your question on that one. So the only thing, and in fact, when even when you do year end. Um, the only thing that happens at that point, the only thing that happens at that point is a um, is the is where it cleans up your retained earnings account at that point. Correct. Great question there. Yeah, the ma the major thing in this case is preventing stray entries, um, and even for publicly held companies. Um, they want to close a quarter and so prevent any additional entries into that particular quarter. <laughs> and uh, the, the next comment that came up, thanks, that was my next question. So awesome, glad we can, <laughs> glad, mind reading isn't also in our job description, so perfect. Any other questions from the group while we've got uh, Dan on the line here? So again, closing out your periods, very important. If you have not done it um, in a while, um, definitely recommend you go through that and using the process all feature, um, using, you know, you could do them in, 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 in a while there, in a group there. The other thing is that if you ever um, need to, uh, if you want to do a backup, um, of your system before you do all that. If it's been a while, you might want to do a quick little snapshot of your system. Dan, can you take them through that? Just taking you through them snapshot real quick. Okay, you wanted the companies or you wanted the tenant? Uh, let's do the tenant, just sitting there. Let's do the tenant okay. snapshot. Okay, here's your tenant. Okay, let me move something. I'm just trying to move something out of the way here. Okay, so um, the tenant here, you're going to want to create a snapshot. And so uh, just for, you know, safety purposes or whatever type situation, and it creates a new snapshot down here in the portion below. And so push comes to shove, a mistake was made or something like that, you can always restore your snapshot. Okay, now the reason we did this at the tenant level is because many of you will have multiple companies. So your choice is you can either make backups or snapshots of each company in question, or over here at the tenant level, you, know, you create a snapshot and it creates a snapshot of all the companies that, are, that belong to that tenant. So it's an overall um, type of snapshot. Did that answer anybody's question? Um, yep, we have, is this, um, so the question is, is this available for cloud-based versions too or just the uh, on-site? So um, I'll, I'll answer this one. So this is this, the snapshot feature is, so whatever we show you here is identical between both the cloud-based as well as the on-site. So the programs look identical, they operate identical. There's really no, in fact, there is no difference in the program if it's on-site or cloud-based. So the snapshot feature would be exactly the same thing um, in both versions um, at that point. Um, to keep in mind that when you do a snapshot, 
Um, the last thing I'll add on this is that when you do a snapshot, this does use drive space. So if you have a lot of snapshots, that could use up some of your hosting drive space you get up there. And everyone's different I, uh, based upon when you bought Acumatica or how long ago and the license you're on. It depends upon how much storage you have up there. Um, if you ever wanted to see how much storage you have, Dan, if you can go to the actions feature up top in the menu, um, uh, in that menu right there. And you can always say view space usage, and you could always see how much space is available and what you're licensed for um, at that point. So for example, um, my system, um, I, I do not have a disk space limit. My disk space um, limit is um, 100, uh, it's 1,000 gigs. Um, not everyone um, has that ability. So just keep that in mind, um, how much space you do have available to you. Um, so if you keep a lot of snapshots, that's something to keep in mind. We had another question that came in. Um, hopefully I answered the first one, okay. Uh, do all members need to be logged off? Dan, I don't know if yes. you want to hit that. Yep. The answer is yes, okay. So um, coming back to uh, the tenant level, um, uh, let me let me do it this way. It's going to be easier to show you. Nope. Okay. Um, let me do it this way here. <laughs> when you create a snapshot, you need to put everything in maintenance mode. Okay, and quite frankly, I have forgotten uh, my maintenance mode portion of it. Uh, we will send directions on that. I'm trying to remember where that is off the top of my head, and we just went down an area that we were not planning on. So we'll make sure that yes, the answer is is that um, for snapshots, um, it should be you should be it, everyone should be out of the system for best practices. Um, the other thing is for period end processing. Um, for period end processing, um, it is recommended to have people out of the system. So while you're closing out periods, it's not required, but it is highly recommended just so that you have. Have no one accidentally doing anything while that, is, that stuff is going on. It's not required, but it is recommended. <laughs> um, yes, you are good sending us down the rabbit hole, so that's okay. But uh, <laughs> that was a comment, that, but we, we enjoy that. It's part of our practice, so awesome. Great questions, awesome questions. Um, Anything else? I've, we've kept you the 29 minutes and we want to make sure that we answer everything. Let me just verify that I did not miss anything. Uh, we talked about the cloud. We talked about the, uh, I think that was all the questions that came in. Um, so just a quick uh, little um, final recap on this. Uh, Dan, for, first of all, thank you for putting this together and uh, thank you for presenting. Really appreciate that. Um, if you have any questions, please follow up with um, your consultant. Um, in fact, just real quick here, let me change myself back to being presenter here. Um, make myself presenter. Sorry, show my show my uh, monitor number one. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Dan or myself or to uh, to Jason. Um, but just you know, since we were the two primary ones on here, please feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions along the way. Our next webinar will be in about three weeks. Actually, sorry, I take that back, in about two weeks. Um, and we will be going over something called OData, the ability to take data, um, be in Excel, and be able to pull data uh, within Excel from Acumatica. So a lot of you are familiar with, hey, I'm in Acumatica, and I can push the data to Excel. That's great. That works awesome. But in Excel, right. you can also read the data um, from Acumatica and update pivot tables and charts and graphs and all that fun and stuff. So that's what we'll be going over in two weeks. So um, and trust me when I tell you, you're going to want to attend that one because that is uh, that entire topic is fascinating. 
Uh, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's one of the things that uh, it's it's amazing. And there is, again, no add-ons needed um, as long as you have Excel 2016 and higher, um, Excel 2016 and higher. Uh, it's built into o, something called OData. is already built into Excel. So if you want to read up on it ahead of time, please feel free to do so as well. With that, Netta Work likes to thank you for attending today's uh, meeting and our webinar. And again, we, as our client, we always want to make sure that we are sharing what's going on out there. And within the next uh, within the next week or two, you will be getting information about the 2019, 2020 R2. I know we're trying to get through 2020 as fast as possible, but the 2020 R2 virtual kickoff of the um, next release of Acumatica, uh, which will be an open event for all for everyone um, hosted by Acumatica directly. So we'll make sure that we send out that information. We should be getting it very shortly. So with that, have a great day and thank you all for uh, for attending. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Stuart.